Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to the most overdue video I think I've ever had on this channel. I've been meaning to get to Holy Nightlight for months. I tried to get to it a little bit last month, but due to the recent development of me expanding the studio and changing things in this room very soon, I had to keep pushing it off because I have a bunch of prerequisite stuff to get done before all that. So I kept pushing this video off, but I'm tired of it. And since I have a little bit of extra leeway this week for time, I'm going to utilize that and abuse it and get this video done. This will be, of course, a reaction and animation analysis to this video. This video is almost 10 minutes long, so it is going to be a long video. A very long video. So buckle in. Hey, I'm just doing this all in ones. I'm not making it a two-parter. Just sit down, get some popcorn or something, because we are going to be talking animation for this one. So without further ado, let's go. If I get quiet during this, I apologize, because I figure there's going to be quite a bit to focus on. So far, they're being very restrictive with the movement. <laughs> it makes sense while they're being so conservative here. But it also makes me excited that there's going to be a lot of really good stuff to come. <laughs> because usually when they're trying to, to save their, uh, their good shots, that excites me. <laughs> Got the vibey music. Hmm. Ooh, beautiful cityscape. Good color balance. こんなところに一人で来ちゃダメだ。家に帰りな。お家なくなった。家族は一人みたいだ。I'm finding myself uh, paying attention to certain visual things here in the color balance, the grading. Everything feels a little bit hazy. Ooh. I feel like the haziness is on purpose. I don't think that's like on accident. I think it's a stylistic choice to make it look a little bit more grungy, you know? I'm just watching an episode of anime right now, aren't I? That's all <laughs> that's all I'm doing right now. Okay, the gun animation. Little bit of muzzle flares. Yeah. <laughs> Simple again. But for good reason. They're really good at using that motion efficiently. But the more I see that efficient movement, the more I'm getting worried that it's gonna all kind of look like this. Which is a shame, but I hope that's not the case. I have not lost faith yet. There's plenty of time. ボス、人間の配達なんて珍しいね。どうするんだ<笑><笑> <laughs> Can't say no to a child, huh? 
still love the colors on that skyline. That is beautiful. Alright. Okay. Shifting things over. Pretty well handled uh, CG car for a project like this. That's what I meant by, like, I'm waiting for certain shots here because I know they can't just be saving the effort for nothing, you know? Alright. They're still keeping things pretty, pretty safe. But then there's shots like that. There's just, it, there's so many like little scattered, tasteful choices. There's another one. There, there's a little bit of everything in this.俺が口出すことじゃねえが、こんな日にまで武器の支給とはあんたらも落ち着かねえな。武器？ん、なってください。さっきから何か聞こえます。こう。It's <笑> That's a fun cut. I like that. Karedawa,気に入ってくれたかな。体調からの息の計らい、喜んでいるはずです。とは言っても、忙しくてお前にすべて任せてしまったかな。コンポーサリオ。This is more subdued than I initially thought. I did kind of anticipate more action than we've had so far. And that might be it. <laughs> but that's also fine. I'm kind of forgetting that I'm watching just an animation from Arknights here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah. I figured it was getting close to the end there. All right. Oh, 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 there's more. I was just gonna let the credits play out. All right. そうなんですか。じゃあこれはお誕生日のケーキですね。おめでとうございます。ありがとう。ロダスに保護してもらえてよかったな。うん。あいつら知り合いだったのか。そう。ロダスに保護してもらえてよかったな。うん。I definitely have a lot of stylistic things I wanna I wanna touch on during the analysis portion of this. Uncle Penguin. <laughs> Penguin's a big softy. 
So after watching it, I'm thinking I might have a little less to talk about than I thought I would initially because, like I said during the reaction, I kind of figured there would be more action in there. But that's fine that there wasn't. The narrative was fun. It had a good story. It had a good just the three-act structure was there. It did have some spots in there that I can break down and talk about more, which is also really fun. But it just didn't have as much as I anticipated. I thought they were going to be shoving a bunch into this. But they paced it a lot more evenly than I initially thought they would. Which I actually respect quite a bit. It just means we'll have a little less to talk about. Because there will be more technical stuff on this one. So one of the first things I do want to talk about is actually the overall style of this animation. This is something I didn't really anticipate, that the whole style of this, while I knew it was going to be more anime-esque and more 2D like that, and it wasn't going to be a, a 3D CG, this was going to be an anime-styled project. I knew that going in. But the visual aesthetic that some of the choices they made resulted in are really kind of cool. Like the line art in a lot of their characters, like these up here, you can really see it in the hair and especially in some other shots. Again, like I said, this is an overall thing, so it's in basically every single shot. The character art having a little bit of unrefined energy to the actual line art. Usually anime is pretty clean in most cases and sometimes stylistically they go for like bolder outlines or very aggressive lines like Attack on Titan is a great example of that where things get a little bit more stylized and you can really tell that there's a specific look that they're trying to go for. In this one it feels like kind of a blend in the middle where they want it to look like the more traditional anime visual aesthetic but also just kind of making it feel unclean there there's a grit to this there's an inner city kind of graffiti edge to the line art in this as well as the color palette being a little bit more greasy and I do love that that is one of my favorite visual aesthetics I actually have a giant graffiti mouse pad I love graffiti and I love that unclean kind of oily bubbly look these kind of stylistic choices remind me of stuff like Shibuya and Shinjuku and the graffiti culture that was popular there especially in the 90s and early 2000s this is that type of influence I I love seeing that. I love feeling it. I love just experiencing that look. I like seeing things that are a little unclean, a little unkept, and just feels really real. It feels more gritty. In addition to the color palettes and lines, I also mentioned the haziness that other shots, especially the outdoor ones in the back alleys later on, have with it. That hazy, glossy, greasy feeling. They're not trying to make things look really sterilized and really pretty and nice and happy and fun and whatever else. It gives you that visual aesthetic of standing under the streetlights, that halogen bulb just piercing down on top of you and just it feels really real i love it it was just a little thing but i wanted to talk about it while i had the time and i know i talked about it a few times during the reaction but i really wanted to talk about this cityscape i think this skyline is really cool the colors are perfectly balanced using a lot of those cool colors these colors are great because blues and purples and such like that these cold colors feel really mellow but also aggressive they're used for parts like this where they want to press down on you. There's something oppressive about it. But somehow, due to the white that is kind of scattered throughout here, feels just warm and inviting enough that you want to take a closer look, you know? There's a lot of color theory at play using shots like this, establishing shots that always show you exactly what the world you're going to be entering feels like. And while they had plenty of shots that were showing you kind of the overall visual aesthetic of things and the state of things, you didn't know that you were entering a city like this until this shot shows up and they did it very well. I know I also mentioned a few times the lack of movement and they were being really conservative with their movements and being very careful about what they did and did not show moving just to save a little bit of time. This is an example that's really easy to point out. This is what I call the Hanna-Barbera effect. For those who don't know that name, they did a bunch of cartoons in around the 60s and so, and they were very popular. The original Scooby-Doo, Yogi Bear, those types of cartoons are really popular for utilizing very clever seams to hide certain movements to make things a little bit cheaper and easier. And this 
this type of head movement right here that's not moving any of the rest of the body. There's nothing else happening on screen. It is just a head rotation with a couple of frames copied and pasted back and forth. There's no extra flair to it. The hair barely moves, etc., etc. These sorts of conservative choices when animating really do save a lot of time and money. Uh, <laughs> it's, it cuts down production time especially by days cutting stuff like this down it might feel a little bit goofy at times it might feel a little bit stiff but in projects like this that are kind of just there to be promotional works that is totally fine it is totally understandable to utilize little cuts like that and shortcuts to not overdo small little details but it's still a good learning point to be able to point out a specific use case of that limited animation just to make things feel a little bit better. There's more coming up with that as well in this little fight sequence they have in a minute. Here's another one of those shots that I mentioned. I, of course, mentioned these during the reaction, but this is just an easy way to throw in some extra little sparks and visual mess to make sure you know that they're being shot at. But it is very simplified. This is just another case of toning things down a bit. You're not following every single individual bullet. You don't need to, but you can see where they're going. You can see the direction. It gets the point across, and that is all you need sometimes. I personally would have liked to see a little bit more done with these muzzle flares and the bullet traces and all that, just because it adds a little more urgency to see more of them and more love put into them. Seeing little highlights like this kind of makes you lose that that aggression, that anticipation, that anxiety that's supposed to be coming with the knowledge that they're being chased down. You want your heroes to feel at risk and really limiting the risk here visually does kind of negatively impact that a little bit. It's obviously not the whole point of this project, but it is something to think about while you're working on shots like this, when and where to cut out those details. I would have put a little bit more time in here if I were the director. This specific shot kind of caught me off guard and felt a little bit clunky purely by the way that she moves here. If I were to play it straight through like this, you would kind of start to see what I mean just going frame by frame, that it feels a little bit jagged, pretty stiff. She's just kind of in the air for an undefined amount of frames just to make sure that they get through space, but it, it makes her feel like a still image. This is something where the timing director probably could have done a little bit better getting this to land right, but it's just, as you see, she's just kind of moving her foot. They're trying to make that impact feel more strong, but after she's been just floating through the air in a straight line with her legs straight up for that many frames, you really lose that impact and again, that urgency. The little things, little things can affect animation in a big way and finding that balance is extraordinarily hard. I do believe that this was like their first project as like an animation team, but it, it, these are the learning mistakes that we have to make in order to better ourselves for further projects projects. This shot here of them running in this mirror is yet another thing that I wish they kind of put some more effort in because it's just a few frames of them just kind of bounding up and down. There's no dynamicism to this. It just feels straight and blocky and very stiff like somebody staring at you with their shoulders rolled back and just like it, it doesn't feel good. I personally would have taken I believe this is Texas probably. Uh, I would have taken her and have her leaning forward more, having that dynamic movement towards the camera because I know it's hard to do in a front facing angle like this but you have to have the character lower their center of gravity to make runs feel a little bit more natural that's why characters like Naruto as excessive as that style is for running and how goofy it looks out of context is dynamic for a reason it's memorable for a reason it is a very specific look Devilman Crybaby is a great example of just throwing everything Thing out the window about physics and making it look correct in a run, but just having that dynamic movement, that explosive visual of having them run, it looks so goofy out of context, 
but and even in context it kind of looks goofy but <laughs> it still looks great because they made the characters feel like that run was their last run it made the energy just so explosive to meet the visuals you know it's just there's a lot to it and of course i had to talk about this scene here this was a very well done car a cg car can be so difficult to animate you have to make sure that the car feels like a character and in this case it felt like a character maybe a little bit cartoony but that works it fits it feels good in the context of the animation the car itself has character you feel the weight the shift the urgency as it dodges the bombs and bullets and whatever else is happening on screen it feels good and that is so hard to do for a lot of animation studios is getting a cg car to feel like an actual character to feel that urgency reflected into a vehicle to a non-living object can be so difficult to do the car spinning around and reacting to these explosions is so characteristic it's so flamboyant it's so visually fun it is precisely the opposite of the prior shot with the run cycles this feels alive expressive explosive movement is visual candy here you just know exactly what's happening it's all very clear i also really enjoy this transition using the headlight to blind out the camera to fade over to a new shot that is such a clever choice and then you just get to see this pov of the car heading right in this is clever that shot whoever handled that one whoever was the director of that shot that sequence good on you that was fantastic probably one of the best shots if not the best shot of the entire project this shot here is another really well done shot this is a, a shot that somebody loves this character <laughs> like this was probably done by somebody who just fell in love with this character and wanted to make sure that this shot felt great because it did comparative to a lot of the other shots that are surrounding this one this one felt so alive and flowing that really just lives with that that whip that whip that's another great example of making a character out of an object something that doesn't have eyes a face a general personality but they give it so much energy that you feel its decision to whap all those guys in the face it feels really really good and the follow-through of the character doing that motion is just so smooth comparative to other shots around it's a little bit underwhelming like i said i was kind of hoping for some more action here but this shot was definitely a very good highlight amongst the rest of them that were just okay and this shot while being very simple has a lot of good about it the lighting is specifically why i stopped on this frame because of course you get the muzzle flare reflecting all of that light back out on things you get to see it reflect here on the car as well as right here which is kind of cool they actually put in the effort to highlight the other spots you didn't necessarily need to go past this line here this is the only spot i would say would be required for that you know light you gotta have some reflection otherwise the whole character feels like they don't belong in the shot you have to have light coming from a source affecting things around it but having this little extra detail right here just showing that there is this line in the hood that has a divot and showing that difference in depth in the car is just a small little detail that people like me eat up like breakfast it is so good i love that you get the, of course the usual light cast on the hair the gradient is very conservative choice as well it's safe to do but it looks really decent and is easy to apply props to that but i really like the effect that they decided to go beyond that spot in the car and give that little highlight right there some love and of course this is another standout shot of this sequence i love the subjectivity of this shot because as somebody who doesn't play the game i don't know if there's any like associated visual aside from the obvious of the angel wings happening here the explosion i don't know what's actually happening behind this 
uh, roof here. I can't tell. I don't know what's happening, but you know it's not good, <laughs> you know? I, I love that they left that detail out. They just showed the explosion and the wings to show you generally what to expect and that there's something happening here, but they didn't spell it out and show you every detail of that sequence. That is a very clever way to save a little bit of time and energy. Would it have been cool to see a shot sequence of whatever she's doing here happening in that real time? Sure, but that would have been so much more expensive, so much more time consuming, so much more detail to add. And as neat as that would be, it's definitely understandable why they didn't show that. And I love that they kept things like these wings here just to add a little bit of subjectivity to it because that explosion is so central on the shot. And yes, I am aware I drew a penis. I did that on purpose. And all of these stills here in this sequence all have the same characteristic, but these little stretches of light, these streaks happening, all of these jagged little edges, these smudges to show the speed, just to show that there is movement away from a direction. That is all you need to do instead of, again, showing all of those movements happening all at once. That's so much more time and so much more effort. Saving time is not a bad thing. I do not want that to be the takeaway of this video. There are plenty of ways to do it efficiently and well. I've highlighted some good and some bad in this project because there are definitely a good balance of both throughout, but these are good ones. These little ways to just kind of stylize things instead of just straight up omitting effort because there is a difference and it is hard hard balance to find. And I really don't want to end on a bad thing, but this is like the last shot I wanted to talk about, and it's for good reason, you'll see why here, but the characters here feel out of place. There is a lighting issue here, there is a compositing issue that happened here, probably something in the post-processing, in the post-production, where they could have blended the characters a little bit better to the background to make it feel more on point. These characters here suffer from it a bit, but not nearly as well. The uh, doctor here actually doesn't suffer from it at all. He looks pretty good. Uh, but these characters here both feel very low resolution and detached from the background. You get all of this space around them that is so dark, but these characters are being illuminated by light from directions that don't have that light coming from it. You have all these explosive lights in the background in the form of fireworks, but then you have these characters that are soft edge lit around their entire uh, silhouette here and it just feels like they're cutouts pasted on top of the shot and it doesn't feel great to see it. It kind of makes the characters feel like they were cut out of a different anime and plopped in there and somebody just opened up After Effects and tried to adjust things and it just it it's a little bit unfortunate because it could have been so much better. I really do feel like this was a an unfortunate happenstance on post-production. They probably composited it poorly. Maybe this was a last-minute decision since it's kind of an after-credits thing anyway, and they had to do it quicker. I'm not sure, but this shot specifically, it is a little present in the other ones in this sequence, but specifically this one angle feels really cheap, and it is... It's really unfortunate because it is a cute moment and I love the sequence. But sometimes you just don't get it right. So that's pretty much it for these. I'm sorry that I had a lot of negative to say. I find those moments as more learning experiences and things to talk about as critiques more than they are supposed to be insults by any means. Every studio has to start somewhere and every studio makes mistakes. I am not saying that I am better in any way. These artists that worked on this can draw circles around me, bar none, but I did want to point out the spots that I think could have been approved. That is my job after all, doing analysis. 
I loved the video. I think that ending scene especially was super cute. Emperor really needs to learn that he's just a dad in disguise and he will be that little girl's uncle for the rest of his life. But nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making this one actually quite a bit because I got to learn so much. And if you liked the video and you want to see more of these, by all means, let me know which animation I should get to next from Ark Knights. I've got plenty to go to. I just don't know where to start. So let me know what I should do next. And I promise I'll get to it sooner than it took for me to get to this one but either way if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more from me you know how to follow me and support me and all that and i will see you in the next video goodbye